from Mishmash, and in this video podcast, we will be exploring the fun of Foley. A Foley artist is someone who makes sound effects in films, radio plays, audiobooks, and in the theatre. They replicate sounds that cannot be recorded on set using different props or instruments. We make sound effects using our instruments in several parts of our shows. Watch the opening of our show Smile and see how Sophie accompanies our movements with sounds on her cello. A few minutes later in the show, see how we accompany the sound of Augustus stretching. So Augustus did a huge tigery stretch. In Hubbub, we have a scene where our main character, Hazel, is exploring what sounds happen when she pokes, prods, and plucks hairs from us. <laughs> As you saw in that last clip, in Hubbub we have a violin and cello, like in Smile and Strange Creatures, but we also have a clarinet and bassoon. Each instrument has its own sound world and creates different sounds. Let's meet the instrumentalists now. Hello, Lolly! Hello! <laughs> Can you introduce yourself and your instrument? I can. My name is Lolly and I play this magnificent instrument here, the best of all the instruments, the bassoon. Can you play us a few notes, please? I can absolutely play you a few notes. Wow, so it actually goes pretty high. Yes, I think everyone thinks the bassoon is this comical, usually low instrument that does the umpas and everything. But actually, it's really beautiful and it can go up really high. It can span over. Let me work this out. It can almost do four octaves. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. That is, that's pretty extensive. But you don't often hear it really high up there. Yeah. And tell us a bit about the reed, because the reed is very special, isn't it? Yes, this is a double reed. Uh, what so, if I, so it means we have two pieces of cane here. Can you see? Um, and, we tie, and we put some wire here. We fold them over. We put some wire, put some binding on the end here. And what it means is that I can make a sound just on my reed. <laughs> and with a double reed, you have two bits of cane like this, a little small hole at the end. So when we blow down it, they vibrate super quick. And that's how we get that really cool croaky sound out of our reed. So this is the most important part of the whole thing, because if you have a good reed, you're going to sound fab. Can you play a few different sounds? We can make some low, funny sounds. 
We can do some things on here called a multiphonic. So this is where you get more than one note at the same time. It's not the nicest of sounds. That's quite a cool one. Yeah. Um, and we can, I'll tell you what else we can do because we have a double read. We can bend the pitches quite a lot, which I find quite funny. So I'm just doing that by bending the pitch there, which I, is, is great. And actually, sometimes that happens accidentally when you're trying to get in tune with other people. You have to do a lot of that. Well, thank you so much, Lolly. It's been great to chat to you. It's lovely to chat to you too. Bye, Lolly. Bye, bye, bye. So that was Lolly, and now we're going to meet Alice, who plays the clarinet. Hello. Hi, Flora. Hi. Um, can you introduce yourself and your instrument for us, please? Of course. My name's Alice. And this is a clarinet. So um, clarinet, like the bassoon, is also in the woodwind family. But unlike the bassoon, um, I have a single reed. So Lully will have shown you her two bits of bamboo, which are joined together. And she can make a sound on her reed. My reed's a bit um, not the cleanest. But I have one piece of bamboo. And so when I blow, nothing happens. It's not, you could eat it like a panda might eat bamboo, but you can't blow on it. So the only way we can make a sound is to put it back on the mouthpiece. Clarinet, um, it doesn't go quite as low as the bassoon, but it definitely goes higher. So I'm just gonna play you um, all the notes or a large number of notes on the clarinet from the bottom to the top. <laughs> you um, play a few of the more unusual sounds on the clarinet? Yes, so you may not have heard these sounds before. Um, there's uh, two sounds that spring to mind. Uh, the first one is when Hazel has um, is clawing her nails down a um, pole. Yes, it's part of our set. Um, and we all go, ugh, because it's not a very nice sound. And for that, um, I use a technique called flutter tonguing. Um, and I use it very low down. It makes a really growly um, sound. I hope you can hear it over the video. Um, and I just basically, uh, if you can all do this, you can all go, it's that rolling your tongue. But I'm doing that whilst I'm also blowing into the clarinet. So I'll show you a low one of those. <laughs> And it kind of makes my eyes vibrate as well. Yeah. <laughs> now, on a bass clarinet, it definitely makes you feel dizzy. Um, and then um, when uh, the clarinet often uses a glissando um, to show um, maybe some, something sliding down or up. So um, I'm going to play a glissando on one note. Uh, so I'm not going to move my fingers at all. And just to show you that you can change the sound or you can make a glissando uh, literally just by changing um, the muscles, using your muscles differently in your, in your embouchure, in your mouth here. So this is just a gliss that I can do on one note. We can, on the clarinet, like, um, like string instruments can do very easily, it's a bit harder for us, we can do um, multiphonics. Mm. So that's playing two notes at the same time. I don't think, uh, like string instruments, we can play more than two notes at once. Although maybe if I sung down my clarinet at the same time as playing two, but I can definitely play, I hope, this, uh, I hope you can hear this, you can definitely play two notes at the same time. Could you hear that? Yeah, that's magical. Oh, well, thank you so much, Alice. It's, it's a, a pleasure. Great to you. Yeah. And you. Thanks, Flora. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. If you'd like to make your own Foley project, choose your favourite story, look through it and think about what sounds you might like to use to illustrate the text. And then gather all the bits you need, and as you or somebody else reads the book out loud, you can make the sounds as the story is being told. Make sure the sounds aren't louder than the storyteller, though. If you'd like to see and hear some examples of me making sound effects to accompany the story Augustus and His Smile, 
follow the link to the Foley Examples podcast. I hope you'll enjoy creating your own sonic accompaniment to your favourite stories. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>